let's assume that I have a class called user with first and last name and a couple of functions inside of it. If I'd like to use a constructor, what I can actually do is use the keyword constructor. Now I can actually bring these properties into the constructor. So let's actually get rid of these and I actually, actually say first name and I can say this is a string and last name, this is a string. Now usually you wanna default everything to vowels because it's going to help you with immutability and help you not make as many mistakes. But we can try that here, but we notice that there's actually a problem here. So we have the update name method actually updates the first name. And if it's a vowel, we can't do that. So let's just change these to vars. So they're properties that can be mutated, uh, which means they can be changed. So now we have a constructor for our user class, which takes in the first name and last name. And if we go back to our main file, we're actually using it you can actually see a couple of things here. First, we have in the user class, you can actually see when we type user, open close parenthesis, we have a string for a first name and a last name as well. So we can put Don and Felker. And so I can, now if I would like to rewrite these, I could easily do that with this properties right here on line six and seven. I can change these to perhaps it should have been Jason Smith, I can reset those here so I can actually change those or I can actually just get rid of them because I don't need them anymore. And then here I'd actually do Jane, I'm gonna change this to Doe. And I can get rid of the property setting here. And if I were to run this again, you'll notice that we're gonna get the same result that we got before. This time we've just used a constructor, a constructor with the parameters and properties inside of here. So these, param these parameters are turned into properties which are you can use inside of your class. So you can see that down here. Now you can also, as you can probably imagine, put your cursor here and you can add the names to the call arguments. So you can actually see that that's actually the first name and that's actually the last name. So you can actually see what these values are as you pass them in. Furthermore, in the user class, if the constructor does not have any modifiers on it, such as the internal keyword, which we'll cover later, you can actually, so if it doesn't have any, any of these annotations or modifiers, you can actually get rid of the constructor word and this will be the primary constructor. So now we've actually cleaned up the code a little bit more. We have the user class, which takes in a first name and a last name. So we can see that here, we have first name, last name, works just fine. We don't have to have the constructor keyword on there, though if you could still use it if you'd like to, but it's very common if you have a primary constructor and that's it, you just remove the constructor word. Now, if you wanted to have perhaps this to only be for internal and you wanna have constructor and you tried to get rid of the constructor word, you would see that this is not going to work. Use constructor keyword after any modifiers of a primary constructor. So we need to put constructor here if we were to restrict the visibility of the user classes constructor. But we're not doing that here, so this is a basic class with a primary constructor. One of the additional things you can do inside of a constructor is also set default values. So we could set this to be a blank string, and perhaps we knew we were always going to be working with the Smith family for whatever reason. We could just say this is Smith. And so if I'd like to, back inside of our main file, I could actually get rid of the last name if I didn't want that there. If I wanted to overwrite it here to be Doe, I could do that. And so now this is just going to say Don Smith and Mr. Smith and Jane Doe and Miss Doe because we're using the default values inside of this primary constructor.